Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 71 for Wednesday, November 11th, 2015. Root Access. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Braintree. Even the best mobile app won't work without the right payments API. That's where the Braintree V.0 SDK comes in. One amazingly simple integration gives you every way to pay. Try out the sandbox and see for yourself at braintreepayments.com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Now, there was a time in a former Android life of mine where I felt like rooting my device was the only true way for me to get everything I wanted out of my Android experience, whether to improve my battery life or allow for system deep backups. I enjoyed the freedom that root access afforded me and I always felt like it was the epitome of why so many people are drawn to Android as an open source operating system. True system level access. Own your device, answer to no one. Sounds tough, doesn't it? Well, at some point, I suppose stock Android began to get good enough that I didn't feel like I needed to root my device or flash a custom ROM. And to be honest, there aren't a whole lot of things I've missed about root access on my daily driver. That is, until I started to play around with the apps in today's episode. These apps really bring a level of control to the rooted user that you simply don't get without root. And you might not even know what you're missing. Now for the obligatory warning. Rooting your device carries with it a number of potential risks. You could brick your device by flashing a zip file in place of a system image file. I speak from experience. Rest in peace, first generation Amazon Kindle tablet. You can open up access to internet baddies because after all, by rooting your device, you are creating a rather large security hole. So no downloading apps from unknown sources or dodgy app stores, okay? And all in all, you can just plain mess things up in ways that can break your heart and your pocketbook if you aren't careful. So, if that sounds intimidating, you want to think twice and view this episode from the perspective of, wouldn't it be nice, but no thank you. And finally, I and Twit are not responsible for any damage rooting your device might bring your way. I'm just, you know, showing off some cool apps, like I always do. With that out of the way, let's take a look at three apps that require root access in this week's roundup. When Android 5.0 Lollipop hit the scene, there was a lot that changed about the Android user experience. Google spent a lot of time refining the look and feel of Android in new ways, and beyond that, tweaking existing functions, making them work differently in some ways. The multitask button prior to Lollipop was merely a running list of apps that you'd opened recently that were actually running in some way in the background. Now with Lollipop, the multitask button, now referred to as the Recents view, showed every app you'd run on your device, making for an unruly, nearly infinite scroll of apps and pages. So long. They even included Chrome tabs in there individually, which ballooned things further, potentially. The app called Recently was designed to bring control back to the rooted user so you can reduce that clutter and make the Recents view a bit more manageable. With Recently, you can set limits for what appears there. Setting an age limit, for example, of three days will mean that nothing older than that will occupy that list anymore, keeping it a bit more current and hopefully more relevant. Setting an entry limit will always keep the Recents list trim by butting out apps that aren't being used anymore once that limit is reached. Maybe you don't want every Google search to occupy a card in Recents. Or hide the settings card to make room for other apps. You can force remove tasks regardless of if they're active or not, but be forewarned that doing so could have unwanted side effects in your system. And finally, when your Recents list is so damn large, all you want to do is start fresh 
instead of manually swiping them away, which takes forever, and I know this from experience, just add a clear all button to the bottom right corner and your life just got way easier. Recently is free, but kick the developer a dollar and six cents for the pro version so that they can get a coffee or maybe a beer. Find recently now in the Play Store. Often, root users are after ways that they can customize their device that simply aren't achievable without root access. At a system level, the on-screen navigation buttons are generally untouchable. That is, of course, unless your device is rooted and you're running an app called Soft Keys Root. Warning right off the top, Soft Keys doesn't work with all phones, though the developer does say it plays very nicely with Nexus devices at least. The developer also recommends a flashable backup of your ROM be made prior to making changes with soft keys because it, you know, modifies system files in order to achieve its magic. You have been warned. Okay. So, soft keys is a way to change the design of your on-screen navigation buttons, as well as add new buttons to the fold if you want. When you launch the app, you're taken to the button selection menu, showing a huge scrolling list of navigation themes of all shapes, sizes and colors. Now, many harken back to the pre-lollipop days, so you'll find plenty of navigation buttons from days of old that you might not want to use. But if you're running lollipop or marshmallow and you want to find a new take on the triangle, circle, square navigation buttons, just swipe left and you'll find the online gallery. Users of soft keys have contributed nav buttons for you to discover and install on your device at will. And there are plenty that riff off of the newer nav button style. You can find traditional buttons, as well as some that are, let's face it, pretty far out there and kind of ugly. You can even find some that have been ripped or maybe influenced by OEM specific nav buttons. Just tap to download the one you want, then you can tap the save button to add it to your saved configuration so you can swap back and forth. And finally, tap the check to apply. Select the scaling of the buttons when it prompts you to do so, and don't be afraid on this next one. Your phone is rebooting to reflect the changes being made under the hood. When your device is back up, you can revel in the beauty of your newly customized navigation buttons. A new way to customize your device. Find Soft Keys Root for $1.99 in the Play Store. So you say you like gesture controls, huh? Well, even if you didn't just say that, you probably didn't, humor me. Many apps have some sort of gesture functionality built into them, but when it comes to system-wide gesture support, unless you're running a custom ROM that supports it, you might be SOL. That is, of course, unless you're rooted and running an app called GMD Gesture Control, which takes multi-touch to a whole new level and works inside all apps on the device. Some default gestures are programmed for the first time you run the app to give you an idea as to the possibilities of rolling gesture control into your Android OS experience. For example, placing four fingers on the display and then closing them inward takes you to the home screen. Three finger swipe down is the same as tapping the back button. Swiping four fingers to the left or to the right takes you to the next or previous app in your recents list. This acts as an excellent way to multitask between two apps that you need to swap back and forth many times in a row. If you place four fingers in the center of the screen and then fan them outward, you'll get a small on-screen menu of your most recent app so you can select the one you want from the launch pad. That's just for starters. GMD Gesture Control is all about customization, so let's create a new gesture. I'll select Gesture, and then I'll tap to record a gesture. And here I'll draw the letter M on the screen and then accept that. I can choose a portion of the screen as the zone for detection, but in this case, I'll leave it as anywhere that M happens to be drawn on the screen. Then in action, I'll go ahead and tap application and find Gmail in the list there. I'll accept that. And now no matter what I'm doing anywhere, I can always jump right to Gmail just by drawing the letter M on my screen. Now, beyond that, you can set per app actions, meaning I can tell my camera app to do something different when I draw a letter M versus other apps. It's nerdy, tweaky fun, feels kind of like science fiction, but you can find the light version of GMD Gesture Control to take a look for yourself, but you'll probably want to unlock the full suite for $5.55 in the Play Store right now. Now, my trusty Nexus 5 is now rooted, so I plan on doing more regular check-ins on root-level apps. 
I have yet to fully explore the exposed library, which seemed to hit the scene shortly after I stopped rooting my devices. I plan on devoting an upcoming episode to some of the best system tweaks that exposed brings to rooted Android devices. And it's perfect timing because exposed is rumored to be near release of a marshmallow compatible version. I'd love your feedback. Send your favorites, your favorite exposed modules to me at arena at twit.tv and I will absolutely include those in an episode very soon. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. And that's Braintree. Developers around the world have embraced the Braintree V.0 SDK as the easiest way to add secure mobile payments to their apps and websites, no matter what payment type. Braintree accepts it. Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, even Bitcoin. And if something new pops up, Braintree will support that too. It's the same payment solution used by Uber, Airbnb, and GitHub, so you know it scales. It's simple, secure payments. It's code that you can integrate in minutes. And developers, you are covered here. Braintree has thought about you. You don't have to worry about taking days to integrate your payments. With Braintree, it's done in minutes. And if you don't even have minutes, if you don't have that kind of time, you can give them a call and they'll handle the integration for you and walk you through it. The Braintree code, Supports Android, iOS, and JavaScript clients. You've got SDKs here in seven languages, .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, and Ruby. And it's elegant code, clearly documented. It's just 10 lines of in-app code. You really can't mess it up. Braintree gives you an easy way to accept multiple payment types with one integration. Integrating it into your app is as easy as inserting just a few lines of code. So try it out for yourself in the sandbox. It's braintreepayments.com slash arena. Check it out for yourself and we thank Braintree for their support. All right, this week's big app fits the theme perfectly and it expands on one of Marshmallow's best new features. Let's take a look. One of the marquee features of Google's latest version of Android 6.0, Marshmallow, is a battery saving feature called Doze. Doze kicks into gear when your device has been sitting flat for a designated amount of time, unused and unplugged. The device will actually detect this lack of use and ramp things down on the device, only updating and refreshing core apps at slower intervals in an effort to kind of cut down on battery used during its standby state. Put simply, it is awesome and totally effective. But we want access to this because, well, as root users, why not? NapTime is a new root app by Francisco Franco that gives root users access to settings that alter how Doze operates under the hood. Instead of trusting Google's years of beta testing to find the sweet spot, take your standby battery into your own hands. With nap time, you can make all the setting adjustments you might want. There are sensor adjustments, so you can you know, determine how long a motion sensor in your device needs to be completely dormant before determining that it's safe to kick into doze mode and how your location is locked in prior to activating Doze to make sure it knows where you are before it goes to sleep. The settings for idle mode allow you to determine how long each stage of the transition into going fully idle will take, as well as how often the device will come up for air to make sure nothing important has been missed during that time. The apps section here has a few tweaks that make sure you don't miss an alarm, for example, due to the doze state, and as well that the device isn't awake and churning battery for too long after, let's say, an SMS or an MMS message comes through. The default settings you see when you first launch NapTime are actually pulled directly from the Android framework, so you'll need to experiment to find your own sweet spot beyond that. And if you want to go all gung-ho, go ahead and turn on aggressive doze. That'll actually attempt to switch to idle right when you turn off your screen. Careful with that one. NapTime is free with a way to donate to the developer inside the app. Find it now in the Play Store. Now, I'll admit those settings are a bit intimidating. Personally, I was a little afraid to touch them myself. They break down the stages of Doze to a level that will make your head explode. It's one of those situations where you're glad you can, but how deep will you really choose to go? Maybe, you know, adding in some presets might help the casual user to find a sweet spot. That tip 
is free, Francisco. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv, or you can post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com, and you can share them with me and the rest of the world there. The show records live every Wednesday right around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv slash live. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena. Bye.